Okay, we are standing on the top of Ngahari, which is a mountain just near the Nolaholo Environmental Center. And behind me, we have the boundary of Tarangiri National Park. So everything on the left-hand side or the western side of this boundary is national park land. And everything on the right side or the eastern side is um, Maasai village land. And one of the most important things to notice here is that there are no fences. So the wildlife is free to move in and out of the national park. And this is both what maintains the health of the national park when the wildlife moves outside in the rainy season, but it's also what sets up a huge amount of conflict between wildlife and local people. The tourist who comes to Tanzania and stays in a $500 a night game lodge is unlikely to come to a place like this. They're sitting here swatting flies because there's an enormous amount of dung and domestic livestock. But places just like this are vital to the ecotourism that is just a short distance over there in Tangiri National Park because the animals from Tangiri National Park, the zebra, the elephants, the lions, must come into areas like this to feed. They are the same lions in the National Park. The National Park will lose its lions and lose the attraction for the people who want to come and visit those lodges away from the flies and congratulations on your grant from the Big Cats Initiative of National Geographic. Okay. I guess the, the, the question um, everybody um, needs to ask, and it's, it's the tough one, um, helping communities like this is a wonderful thing to do. Um, you help them in the schools, you help provide employment, uh, you help um, fortify their bones. And, and as, as a development project, that's hugely compelling. The question is, Anne, do you think, do you think by doing that you're really going to um, get them to have a different attitude to, to animals? Is this going to work? Is, is, the, is the development going to lead to conservation, do you think? I believe very strongly that it will. Um, I, think that, I think that a lot of the issues with community and animals, a lot of the issues go away if you acknowledge that they have a problem to begin with. Mm -hmm. And if you acknowledge they have a problem living with livestock and then you try and help them deal with that problem, already they're a little bit on side. And then when they see the success of the other projects that one, one's doing within the community, then they do uh, they get on board. They make the connection. They make the connection and, and we do a lot of community education, and I had one of my team say to me the other day, they said, you've ruined us, Anne. And I said, why have I ruined you? And he said, because you've taught us compassion. Because prior to that, there was no compassion. You know, the animal's an animal, a wild animal, or anything. is just nothing to be cared about. It's just, it just is. If it's running around with, with a trunk severed, that's the way it is, or a leg severed, that's the way it is. So I think that they're now beginning to look at animals in a different, in a different way as far as conservation goes. And thank you so very much. It's been wonderful to spend this time with you. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so glad that you were able to come to, come to see the project firsthand, and I hope you'll come back. I hope so too.